Hi, everybody. Welcome to NAM 2021. We're virtual, but we are live and we are just so glad to have you back with us. Um, I've noticed a lot of you participating in the other live sessions. So thank you for joining this one as well. I'm Jamie Hernandez. I am the product marketing manager at Mackey. And this live presentation is featuring our MC series headphones. We're coming to you from Virtual Nam again. We have a ton of great stuff planned for you. So thank you for joining us. First off, stick around to the end because Anyone who is here and attending NAM and participating in the event chat within SwapCard, that's right, get into SwapCard, participate in the chat there, you will be eligible for our giveaway. We're going to be giving away some MC450 headphones, just like these ones, to one of you lucky people very shortly. So be sure to follow us online. You can find us on Facebook, um, Instagram at Mackie Gear, and also visit our website at Mackie.com for more details about your favorite Mackie products. We will be joined by Mackie's very own product manager behind it all, and Cola, also known as Kid Sensation, who is a fellow Macoid and user of our products to discuss his experience recording and mixing in his all-in-one Mackie home studio, which is also going to be featuring our MC450 headphones as well. So before we bring him in, here to talk about the journey that it took to create this new line of headphones and more is the product manager behind it all, Craig Reeves. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm on the booth? What? <laughs> hey, guys. You're live, man. How's it going? Welcome. It is excellent. This is a pretty neat experience. I I, I really dig the, the benefits of NAM without the NAM Thrax and right. all the crazy running around and stuff. It's pretty cool. I would be sick by now. I, I definitely oh. would be filling it in my feet. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So it, it's nice. Actually, I can't, I have to admit, I haven't worn Nam shoes. Well, shoes this entire Nam is what I should be saying. I'll be wearing <laughs> slippers again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice. like, you know. <laughs> so, but I am dressed. I do have good. pants. We appreciate the pants. So Craig, hey. let's, you're, you're, the, you're the product manager for a lot of great products we are going to be diving into today. But first, can you share a little bit more about what you do at Mackie specifically? Sure. So the product manager at a company, it, it it's really simply, it's the guy who comes up with the product concepts that a company makes. And here at Mackey, I'm one of three product managers. There's me, there's Matt Heron, and then both of our bosses, Matt Redman, and the three of us, we plan out what products Mackey makes each year. That's a cool job. I love it. <laughs> so last year we released quite a few new products which have people covered from the stage to the studio and now everything in between as you all have been seeing now. Um, I know we, we've covered a few of these topics more in depth in our other live sessions so make sure you all go check those out but can you give us a quick recap of what some of those products are? Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the biggest thing is there it is right there. Look at that. Someone's anticipating what I'm going to say. The biggest thing is, is before 2020 Mackie didn't have any microphones. No one saw mics as a horizon, as a, a product on the horizon for us. And now we've got a ton. We've got a great microphone lineup. Uh, so we have some uh, just like straight XLR normal microphones. And then we have a, a lineup of four USB microphones that target users going all the way from the work from home, school from home kid who just needs to plug a mic into his Chromebook and get, you know, into a class all the way up to Chromium, the mic you see there right now, which is our flagship USB microphone. It's got a mixer in the base. Uh, it's got uh, four polar patterns. It sounds wonderful. All of our mics are USB-C except for the EM91CU, which has an old school B-type connector. Um, and uh, it is... Like Chromium really is like the uh, the best microphone for like singer songwriter stuff and and it kind of Mackie going back to its roots. So totally. we also did some headphones. We've got a ton of new products. We launched the new headphones. Series three. Yeah, you've got the the four fifties, which are also a product that I did. We're giving those um, away too. Rock. Anybody um, who's participating in the chat. And uh, I think uh, the other big announcement last year was the was the Profex V3 series, right? Uh, definitely. 
We did cover that. Here we go. That bad boy. That's my favorite one too. Uh, the ProFX 6V3, uh, absolutely the best value, I think, for uh, for small format mixers that's out there. You've got uh, the 24 effects, digital effects in there. It's a USB audio interface, and it is the typical mixer functionality. You've got a two band EQ instead of three. Other than that, uh, you can link the two channels one and two. So you can put a stereo source there as well. Super flexible. If all you, 24, to, you get all 24 effects right. in the six channel model, which you don't find anywhere and up to 60 decibels of gain. So all those gain hungry mics, you don't have to purchase a 10 or a 12 just to get that. You, you're set with the small compact solution. I love it. And yeah, you bring up a good point. If someone's using like a, 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 an SM7B or one of those gain-hungry microphones, uh, you don't need a cloud lifter. It's got the Onyx preamps on it, just okay. like the rest of our mic, uh, the rest of our mixers. I mean, so uh, wonderful product out there. You also uh, released oh. some. Uh that's monitors right. i think we're going to be talking about a little bit more but um yeah. yeah crx those were included in some bundles you want to talk a little bit about those for sure so we also had the uh, refresh of our cr line the crx line and uh one of the things we did is we took all the existing existing SKUs from the cr line and we added bluetooth so there's a bluetooth and non-bluetooth model of the three four and five inch transducers Plus, we added a pair of eight-inch transducers and, yeah, hang on to that, the uh, eight-inch subwoofer as well. And the subwoofer, I think, has a really, really cool feature. It comes with a remote so that you don't have to get down on your knees and go under your desk when you're making changes. It allows you to change the sub level and then also the overall level so you can mix how much bass is in your signal to That's turn awesome. it all the way off, even if you want to. And uh, it, it's just a little remote that sits right there next to your keyboard. Definitely. And those are great for people who are gamers as well. You know, they don't have to just sit in your studio. They can be in your gaming area, <laughs> whatever yeah. you, you want to call that. Um, but you can set your sub up and have the dial right next to you. So you have total control over that without even having to get up in the middle of a game, right? Apartment dwellers also, especially you get that thump on the ceiling from the downstairs neighbor. You can twist that volume down. <laughs> and another really cool thing about the sub is that it's got Bluetooth built into it. So if you have not just the Mackie CR monitors, but any pair of monitors that don't have Bluetooth, the CR monitors add Bluetooth to that set. And so it gives any set of monitors Bluetooth capability. That's so awesome. What do you all think about that? That's pretty cool. So mics, headphones, Mackie wasn't always known for these type of types of products, right? Um, what was some of the reasoning behind why we decided to go in this direction? I mean, what were customers asking for? Uh, well, you know, all of these projects started pre covid pre craziness but um what we what we found is that the entry point for content creation got lower than it has been in a while uh and you know a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's it's easier for people to get into it the barrier of entry is much lower no matter whether that's electronic music or or traditional music there's lower cost electronic drum sets and guitars and you know a lot of this stuff is like really really good so more and more people are getting into creating content, but they don't want to have to spend $500 for a pair of monitors and a thousand dollars for a mixer and all this stuff. So <laughs> totally. uh, that opens up the market. It increases how many people need this extra periphery gear. And uh, that's what we were responding to. Of course, with this whole COVID thing, that market exploded. That's and crazy. so, uh, yeah, it, it, it increased it by a lot. But, uh, but initially that was the, re the reason why is because, you know, we saw more demand for lower cost alternatives 
And, uh, you know, when you think about the history of Mackie, that's kind of what we do. So. And it's interesting that you, you bring up, you know, of course, we all know the most obvious pandemic thing that hit. But what's interesting is Mackie started de designing these products before all of this even happened. I think yeah. it things seem to have taken off even more in ways than we expected. What's what's some of the feedback that we've had so far? Well, you know, the the feedback on our USB microphones has been fantastic because there was a there was a time when like you couldn't get a USB microphone or camera if you wanted one. Like if you had triple the amount of money to throw at it, you couldn't buy one. They just weren't there. And so right around that time is when we turned production on for our USB microphones and uh, some of these newer products. And it, it really was a boon to the company. I, I, I think it, it was a, a huge help because uh, Mackie had availability when some other brands didn't. For sure. So. So what are some features that stand out to you for any of these particular products? Easy. I mean, like <laughs> there's tons of uses, but who is your, who do you think is the target user? Um, uh, you like know, for you. sure. Yes. All of them, you know, <laughs> as, as wide a net as we can cast, but, but really what we want to do is we want to make the easiest products to use that are out there. That's a, 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 a core edict that uh, our company has, has pushed down to product management is look, all of this stuff has to be very accessible and easy to use because people are different. You know, I'm a manual reader. I'll read a manual and look at all this stuff before I ever connect a product. What? But yeah, yeah, totally. And that's not the way people work anymore. <laughs> now people want to watch videos on YouTube and they, they learn by, you know, doing rather than, and so that places more of a focus on things like great industrial design. When you look at a product, you should know a little bit about how it works just by the way it looks, for example. And, uh, and, and these are all things that our management has said, like, you know, you absolutely have to do this. This is, this is our reality now. So, uh, totally. challenge accepted. <laughs> I love your enthusiasm. And I think the crowd's really enthusiastic too. I know a lot of you are asking some really detailed questions about some of the gear. Just to remind you, we did do some deep dive into the ProFX mixers, the Element mics. Um, and you can also subscribe to Mac and TV on YouTube to catch a deeper dive into all these products. So we might actually answer a lot of those questions in those. And Brad, who has been putting on some great live sessions earlier, uh, has actually done a video in that uh, series where he demos each microphone. So make sure to scope that one out, subscribe to Mackie TV and check those out. Um, but I think, you know, as people who work with Mackie, we could talk about how great it is all day, but it sounds better coming from someone who is an actual user of the gear. Are you all ready for Cola, AKA Kid Sensation? Let's bring them out. I don't hear, I don't hear them, but I can feel them Getting ready. Are you all ready for Kid Sensation? Feel their energy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. How you doing? Yo, What's my family. Going? What's good? So good to have you. Hey, man. You so uh, look at that. You've got a great little studio set up there. And uh, I see a Pro FX. I see some CRX monitors. Uh, yes, you nice. do. And a, wait, is that a microphone there I see? Is that Absolutely, one of our mics? Yeah. And, you know, I got that EM91C, man. There we go. The back sure. Me too. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think before before we dive into some gear, I do want to give a, a, a good introduction to, to Cola, of course, because if you're just tuning in, we are very lucky to have this man. He emerged in his early days with Grammy Award winning artist Sir Mix A Lot. And as a solo artist, he released five CDs selling over 1 million units. He's currently creating content in his many roles in his all Mackie studio. They feature MC450s and a lot of other great Mackie products, which we're about to dive into. So we're so happy to have you here, Cola. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you, man. I'm honored, you guys. This is wonderful. It's amazing. 
So, Cola, you're no stranger to this industry, but obviously yeah. <laughs> times have changed. What is your, your background in music as far as recording yourself and, and just getting music out in general? Well, Jamie, since you're going to call me out like that, uh, <laughs> I have to date myself a little bit, man. Uh, <laughs> Craig knows where this is going. Oh, yeah. Back when we were recording and, you know, some of the early days with Sir mix and some of his earlier recordings, man, we were, you know, um, getting into the recording studio and trying to pursue this dream was a was a real expensive endeavor, man. I mean, you had to pay, you know, 50, 75, 100 bucks an hour for studio time. And then, you know, all of the equipment, man, was just out of reach. I mean, you know, you I guess you guys will probably remember the big reel to reel recording equipment and you had two inch tape and all of these kind of things, man. And so, um, you know, the 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 recording process back then was just, it was very arduous, it was long, it was difficult, and it was high and hard to get into, man. I mean, the bar was set really high. So you had to be dedicated to your craft and then you also had to come with a little money to, to, uh, to get behind what you're doing. And uh, back then, man, I mean, recording was also just, uh, it was just more difficult in terms of like, you know, okay, for example, right, when you wanna do an edit to something, let's say you wanna, you know, uh, you wanna make a, a clip of something, make it a little shorter or whatever. Well, Craig is laughing because he knows what I'm about to say. You would <laughs> literally have to cut tape with an X-Acto right. knife. <laughs> you got to get your block out and your, paste. And your little <laughs> grease pencil and your Thank tape. You. And you, yeah, Thank man. You, Craig, you, 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 know, you know the pain, man. You know the pain. He's, That's a lot of work to get your buttermilk biscuits, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Square Dance Rap, Posse on Broadway. All of those classic <laughs> songs were cut on two-inch tape. I'm serious. And they were yeah. cut exactly the way that I'm talking about. And so the uh, the process was definitely a lot longer. It was more difficult. And if you wanted to make an edit, you had to cut actual physical tape. And if you cut it wrong, you'd have to bounce back down. And I mean, it was just a lot of, uh, it was a lot of, uh, a lot more difficult process. But, you know, fast forward as I got into digital recording, man, and I got my first, you know, digital recording studio, um, all of those things, you know, began to kind of change and the whole thing began to change. And the, the 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 price point to get into, you know, recording became, you know, a lot more affordable and it just allowed people, you know, more access. You didn't have to, you know, put a, a $20,000 budget together to cut a, a, a demo. You could begin to get your computer and your equipment and you could just start kind of cutting your demos and working on your craft. And then, you know, right, digital was digital. So. If somebody had a million dollar studio or somebody had a three thousand, five thousand dollar studio, he didn't know the difference because digital was digital. And if somebody just worked hard enough and were creative enough, they were able to, you know, step their game up and get onto those and get onto that playing field, man. So yeah, I went I was all the way back in the dinosaur days, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> fortunately now we're able to uh to to step into this new world of technology. So it's good. So so speaking of technology, you and Mackie have become pretty good friends lately. This started yes. with a pair of headphones. Let's Absolutely. talk about that. So the, the first thing, you know, it's, it started over the, MP, the, the uh, MC450s. And, you know, I, I got those and I was like, man, these are amazing. And they were talking about all the different, you know, products they were doing. And then so we got to you know, talking about, you know, the, stu the studio equipment, all the different things that you guys were launching. And I was like, look, you guys, Mackie is a strong, scrappy, young company that, you know, uh, that's been, been in, you know, they're Seattle based. Shout out to Seattle, 206, 253, 425. <laughs> and so we, um, you know, we have a lot of things in common, right? I mean, Mackie started like in the late 80s and I, I don't date myself again, but, you know, I started back in the late 80s with some mix a lot doing our thing. Yeah. You know, we're young, we're scrappy, we're underdogs, we're independent. And, you know. Oh, we lost him. Oh, there we go. Sorry, right. guys, I know I disappeared for a minute. <laughs> Can you still be okay? Yep, right, we got we you. Back? We good? Okay. Yeah, we back. So, we started, you know, we started independent. We started small. You know, I, I, I know Greg's story and I know a lot of, you know, of, of how this developed. And it was the same as us, you know, developing equipment, you know, and developing our, uh, as, as developing equipment, as developing our stuff and, you know, recording on homemade studio equipment so that we could do a demo to get into a real studio and then, you know, scrapping to, to get out there and putting out records independently. It's just like being young, scrappy, and kind of the underdogs, man, but <laughs> fight and fight and fight. And it makes you have to feel like you have to create even better quality and better, you know, better products 
to make sure that you compete with the with the household brands. So yeah. I knew that there was a lot of synergy in what we were doing. We just started to talk and hang out, and all of a sudden, man, you know, Jamie and Craig adapt, adapted me, or adopted me into the family, and <laughs> all of a sudden, man, you know, it was like you know a, a match made in heaven, man. And then you guys said, "Hey, man, let's let's get you on some equipment. Let's get you uh, let's get you right." And I was right at that cusp where I needed to you know kind of redo the studio and all that, and so this came at a perfect time. And I was like, you know what? I've been using Mackie products for a number of years, different, you know, uh, different mixers and things like that. And I was like, I want to give some of these new products a shot because if they do everything else that they do as well as mixers, I'm like, man, I, I know that it's going to be a home run. So that's where we are now. So uh, now you have a whole home studio. What else were you needing? Or should we just take a look first? I think his enthusiasm has uh, paused his connectivity. No. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at that video. Cola has prepared an amazing unboxing video of everything that he started building his studio from the ground from. So we'll go ahead and click on that while he gets situated back. You good? Yep, yep, I'm here. Are I, you yeah, back here? You're ready to, you ready, you ready to, you ready to we'll, do we'll it. it. All right, all right. You ready to do a little step into your studio? Let's do it. Let's do it. Can you hit that for us, Rob? It's a real good day. MJ. Bad in a good way. Woke up feeling like a million. Jumped up almost at the ceiling. Winning, winning on the right track. On the right team. So exciting. It's good to be alive. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up like a G5. Like from the bay to the A. Whoa, what a hater gon' say, bro, I'm just on 1K, save with the flavor, Frito-Lay. Right All right, now. me and Smoke finishing up these last touches on the Mac. He's set up, it's just incredible, man. It's going down here, man. Let's see what's going on over here. Got the big knob in place. Mic is in your face. Got the monitors working, man, preamps. Some board, man. Pro Tools is up and open. We running, man. We doing our thing. Stay tuned. More sounds coming. Kids and six, yeah. On the way from home, being blacked out, tired on the 20 inch chrome. I went from here to pull up on a man full grown. But I'm still gonna have to get this microphone full blown. Got a call from my home, right? Yeah, but I'm still feeling this youth, too. Say they're gonna reunite the members of the old and new crew. I'm no longer a no, I don't stunt like I used to, but raise the track of the track as nutty as a loose screw. So I had to jump on it, get it mixed, jump on it. With me on the Kennedy Clay, family business to the day. I was still jamming, man. <laughs> what do you all think? Give it up for Cola. Can you guys tell I'm like super proud of my setup? Like, okay, for y'all, just so you know out there, I literally, Mackie didn't even do that video. That was my video. <laughs> he like made that. Commercial, man. That's how proud I am of my stuff. I'm like, we putting in labels and stuff like that. So, you know, and shout out to Smoke for helping me set up my studio equipment and everything, man. This was, this was just such a fun process. That is so hey. awesome. Thank you so much for, for getting that together. Go ahead, Craig. Absolutely. And shout out to you guys over at Mackie, man, for, you know, you guys, sit, they sent me all the equipment I was posting about that stuff. And I left it all boxed. And I literally did not open it till Christmas because I was like, this is Aww. this is my Christmas present, man. You know, being a dad, you never get the cool stuff. So thank you. Shout out to Mackie for giving me the best Christmas present ever. <laughs> oh, God, man. You know, Cola, when we were talking about uh, when we were doing the pre-interview stuff, you gave me one of the best reasons for having Bluetooth on the monitors. I, I saw that you got the, the Bluetooth version of the CRX5s. Can you talk about how you use the Bluetooth on those for just a little bit? Well, what I love about the fact that the Bluetooth connectivity is there is that, first of all, you know, when you're monitoring and doing your studio thing or you have people like coming into the recording studio and they want to play you something or you want to hear something or whatever, 
It's yep. instantaneous. You don't got to worry about, oh, well, email me the track or, oh, well, let's hook up to this. So let's do whatever the case is. People can just walk in. They can locate it on the Bluetooth, bang, and they can begin to play you whatever it is that they need to play you right on the spot. I cannot tell you how money that that function is. It's it's super cool, Craig. So thank you for designing it, by the way. I appreciate it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And that that's a great idea. I love the idea that people are able to allow uh, someone to come into the studio and you don't have to dig ground looking for where's my cable, cable? where do oh, I plug yeah. it in and all that you stuff. You have the adapter. I have an iPhone. Ugh. But also if you, you know, a lot of these guys who are coming up don't know how to do a lot of mastering and mm -hmm. you don't know what instruments uh, should sound like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so to be able to play a well-mastered track or something you think sounds good right up against what you're doing and to be able to tune that, I'm going to tune the 303 a little bit here. I'm going to tune the 808 and get that, that bass just the way that it is in this track. And you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's a super help. And Huge. you were the first person to to bring that up to me. And when I started thinking about it, I was like, God, that that would be a, a real time saver because uh, I can emulate a sound and I can do it by using my hands. I can, you know, <laughs> twist knobs and, you know, the way that I would work instead right. of having to sit and... Um, uh, read a book on mastering and figure right. out where the spaces are and learn what the frequencies are. And you know what I mean? You just right. hear it. Right. And everything's so true to sound, man. It's so true to the recording. I mean, it's like, you know, you bounce the sound between the headphones, between the monitors and between it, it's just, it is so true to sound, man. It's so true to what you get. Cause I take it and then I move it into listening to my car. Cause I'm one of those guys who kind of, I like to listen to things in 50 different sounds off of a little tiny gotcha, laptop yeah. speaker, should... off of car stereo. I want to hear it on every possible you know medium I can. And it's dope how true to sound that, that, that they are, man. It's crazy. Nice. So now that you've rebuilt your, your studio, Cola, what, what goals did you have? And, and how did we help you take it home? I mean, were you just trying to produce? Were you, are you writing your next record? We're all dying to know. Okay, well, before I even get into that part, I got to do a little bit of bragging on you guys because <laughs> there's some things that I think that you guys haven't pointed out that I want to point out about some of the equipment. Number one, about like the about the Pro FX, uh 12 and about the mixer. I mean, I notice these little things and maybe everybody else doesn't. They just like, yo, it's a mixer. But even the the smoothness and the solidness of the of the of the knobs and how accurate everything is. The fact that you guys thought about it's the touch on them. They're not too tight. They're not too loose. It's just perfect. And then, you know, you, the, the, um, the fact that you guys thought about putting a, a, a simple, you know, uh, uh, EQ system there where it's just like, boom, you can tailor your sound just a little bit. Now we know every audio, you know, program has, it has just multiple thousands of difference of EQs and, and effects, yeah. but you guys thought about putting this stuff, there so that if you're using live sound, if you're using it for, uh, you know, different applications or if people just want to hear their premix and to have a little bit of the uh, effects and EQ on there, you guys thought of that and they're really, really intuitive and user friendly. Um, you know, every, every single, you know, step and phase of every single piece of equipment from the headphones, from the open back ones, you know, the MC450s, which will be given away really soon, the comfort of them, like when I put these headphones on, I told you guys many, many times before that I get, I put these headphones on and I'm doing my music, whatever the case is, and they are so comfortable in terms of the cushions, the most comfortable pair of headphones that I've, that I've worn. On many occasions, I get up and I'm like, I'm, you know, doing my mix or whatever. I have to get up and do something. And you guys have all been there. Don't leave me out on this one. I get up, the headphones are on, and bang. I, yeah. I, I, the headphones just boom, and they go flying off of my head because I forgot I had them on. And these 450s are going to end up making me do that on more than one occasion because they're that comfortable. I wear them for hours and hours and hours, and they still feel amazing. They sound so full and so rich. And I love that about the uh, MC450s. I mean, I just, you know, and I mean, I, I can talk about the big knob. I can talk about all those things. I, I won't steal your thunder, Jamie, but I'm just saying that 
everything was thought through so meticulously in terms of the design, in terms of the functionality, and then most importantly, that you were able to achieve all these things and give us elite level equipment for such an amazing price that allows people, you know, access to be able to get that. So now I can get on into, into how I, I plan on applying the, the equipment and use it and all that stuff. So I just had to give you all that. that Thank that, you so much. We that, really that, appreciate that. Love, man. I mean, it's just, I was, I was pleasantly surprised, but not surprised because I expect that from you guys and I've grown to expect it over the years. Wow. Um, as far as how I'm going to use the equipment, man, you guys already know I'm going to be in here making bangers, man, making, you know, mu new music for new projects that I'm working on. Oh, what? there's what the presently past the future album. I was able to um, share that with the Mackie team. So you guys go get that album, kidsensation.com and, you know, all that kind of thing. We throw that little plug in there. But, um, oh, yeah, you're sipping. The, uh, how, does, how does your tea taste? Does it taste a lot better in the mug? Yes, uh, the Kid Sensation <laughs> mugs make every beverage taste even better. <laughs> so <laughs> I highly recommend. <laughs> Where can they no find, where can they, buy guys, your, yeah. where can they buy your stuff? Um, my my, my uh, stuff is going goofy, so hopefully you guys still hear me. You guys still oh, hear yeah, me? Yeah, okay. good. We got you. All good, good. My stuff goes yep. goofy every few seconds, but it's all good. So, you know, um, but anyway, yeah, I, you know, I plan to use this equipment for every single audio function that I could possibly, you know, think of and do because it's so versatile. It's so user friendly. It's so intuitive it just makes it really really simple and i just brag on you guys everywhere i post everywhere i go because and i say i'm gonna say brag on us because i'm i'm now part of the family man forget that there you are. so you know I, I i i am so proud of the equipment and i and and you know what you guys are doing with the equipment and what you guys are doing with the design and the functionality and the price and everything it just makes it so dope for all the musicians that are out there that are looking to share their gifts and all that kind of stuff you guys are just Give, giving them a, a an alley -oop for a slam dunk. It's amazing. Hey, Thank if, you. If I can uh, uh, chime in for just a second here, because uh, Cola mentioned them specifically, and then we got a question about them. Nelson Sandoval asked if the 450s were open back or closed back, and uh, those headphones are semi open back. So uh, they're great for if you're in a controlled environment like Cola is right there and uh, you don't have to worry about any noise bleed. Uh, I would not use them in a tracking booth, say, like uh, if you're there with like other people or you're worried about mic bleed and uh, headphone bleed in the microphone. There you go. You got the 100s. We also I have the, the 350s, which is the model of... I'm not going to say underneath the 450s. I would say parallel right next to, to right the next 450s. To. Yeah, and those are closed back. So um, these guys. No. Nope. Anyway, I just wanted to to throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, and you know these um, these these open back ones, man. They, they I I can understand what went into the design of these. I know Craig's not going to brag on it, so I'm going to brag on it in terms of it. The difference, you guys, when you're mixing. It's important. I think it's really important to think about, you know, to consider open back headphones. And I'll tell you why, because closed back, you know, they, they're, they're going to be on your ears and they're, they're going to kind of tighten the sound in. Craig can kind of explain why this, but I put these on right now and it's almost like I'm talking in a tunnel. It's kind of weird. And it changes, you know, these are for tracking. These are to keep the noise out of your mic, of course, and make sure that you can hear a good, crisp, clean sound, but it, it, it's going to cover your ears, it's going to keep everything tight and in, and it's going to sound like a set of headphones. What I will say about the open backs and about the 450s is that the difference, and you'll hear it as soon as you put them on and as soon as you apply them, the difference is, is that it sounds like the sound is just there and it's just present and you're sitting in the room with the sound. It sounds like you're actually listening to speakers. I don't know how you did it. I'd love to find out. <laughs> I probably couldn't explain it back to anybody, but I'm telling you guys that these headphones sound like the real deal they just it just sounds so natural and so open i don't know craig maybe you can explain why it sounds that way i just told you it does i don't know why i don't know how but maybe craig knows more well it no you know you hear the term i i i, I hate a lot of these terms because they go back into like you know kind of audiophile snake oil but you hear the term sound stage when you uh talk about headphones a lot and that is the image of 
of the, the, that's the placement of the sounds. So, you know, imagine you're in a club, like a jazz club, for example, and you've got your different performers. Here's your drummer on, uh, on the right side. And here's your upright bassist on the left. And, uh, you've got a vocalist maybe in the middle. Well, you're going to hear those sounds in this natural environment that includes room reverberation and everything else. And, uh, that's what, allows you to place uh um, where you are and 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 it, it gives you like a it's it's a natural way of hearing right when you put on headphones uh closed back headphones what you do typically is that space tightens up and instead of coming from outside of your head, it almost kind of sounds like it's coming from in the middle of your head, like right, you know, like it's, <laughs> I it's know exactly coming from what right you're here. About, and probably most of the people listening and, do. And so uh, it's not natural, a because of the way that it's mixed. Uh, a lot of times, you know, by intent, uh, but uh, also because none of that natural reverberation that happens in the room, none of that room tone or the kind of little things that give us these clues about how we're hearing, none of that stuff exists. And what open back headphones do is they allow a little of that back in and, and it really opens up how things sound. And I think they sound much more natural um, uh, now there, there are definitely situations where open backs aren't the best choice. Um, you know, I come from a DJ world in DJ world, open backs would be a killer, like awful, awful s choice to, to pick because <laughs> you have so much noise and, and everything else. And you want to isolate that as much as possible. Uh, vocal tracking, things, uh, applications like that, where you're in wearing headphones close to a microphone. Well, that sound not only allows that noise to come in, but it allows that noise to go out as well. So like, you know, if someone's sitting next to you and you're wearing open backs, they'll be able to hear what you're hearing. And so you don't want that mic bleed, you know, coming from your headphones. And so, uh, there, there are times when a, an open back will really help. I, I think, especially when you're mixing and mastering, uh, open backs are fantastic for that. And, as, and if you're into a lot of kinds of music that are more live in nature and you just want to enjoy listening and you're in an environment where you can control a little bit, open backs are the way to go. Dope, dope. So question for, I guess, maybe for Craig, why would you choose to mix using headphones versus studio monitors? Or may, maybe Cola, if you want to take this one. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. For me, um, I have to, I have to mix in headphones. Now, that's not to say that I don't go back and use my reference monitors to, 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 to go back and forth. Because as I told you from earlier that I love to compare the sound in multiple, in multiple different ways. Um, but I think it's really, really important to listen, you know, through a set of, you know, of really great headphones, especially, like I say, the, the open back 450s, because it allows you to just really, really be tight and accurate on the, the volume, tight and accurate on, you know, the sounds and really, you know how it is when you're in a set of headphones and you're mixing, you kind of almost lean in and you're listening a little bit more intently, a little bit more, it just, I don't know, for me, it centers me, it, it dials me in, it helps me to really focus on the, the, the minutia of all the different sounds and get a really, really, you know, tight mix. So for me, I think it's super, super important to do it through headphones. But then of course, man, when you kind of feel like you got it really close, you drop it in those um, those monitors, man, and you and you crank the volume up. That's when you invite people in to come in and listen and crank it up loud and and do all of that kind of thing. But I think it's super important to start in your headphones and to uh, to to listen a little bit closer. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I I uh, I, I used to be the kind of guy who was like, oh, I'll never mix in headphones. I I always mix on monitors and that's not the way people listen to music now. And that's not the way Bass. music is mastered. Now music's Bass. mastered to be listened to when the little I, I Apple earbuds, you know? And yeah. so, um, you've, you, 
you've got to face that reality, I think. And because people, people want to hear things that sound like the stuff that's out there that they're, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you come at, if you come at like, like, let's say you make a, a an R and B single or, 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 or an electronic music single and you don't compress it and give it that extra little pop that it needs to at least be on par with the other stuff. Yeah. Well, then you're mastering, you know, when you're playing in that Spotify playlist against everything else, you're going to be this much quieter yep. than that. And you're going to be yep. this much lower. And, you know, you can, you can start that walk down the loudness wars talk and all of that. And, but you know, the reality is, is people want to hear this line. Yeah. And, um, yep. I think there's a, a, there's a good way to do that where you preserve some dynamic range and, and some clarity, clarity, but also you give it the, the oomph that people are looking for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Well, I guess this kind of gets us into our live Q and a, we've got some questions populating. You all ready to answer some questions? Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. Again, We're such thank you nerds, all. man. Me and me and Craig will talk text and all tech tech jungle jumble mumble jumble and stuff. I know day, BFFs over here. You're gonna get We're, matching we're gear nerds, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we're talking about um, where we have performed in the past as well, because uh, I think we've got some overlap. We were in the same area, running around the same area at the same time. Yes, so uh, the question, what mic am I using right now? That is the straight up plain vanilla EM91 with the removable uh, hydrophobic, acoustically transparent Ooh. pop filter that we also sell. So um, yeah, it's the EM91. What do you mean by hydrophobic, Craig? Hydrophobic means that when I... <laughs> have a juicy <laughs> mouth and I go to enunciate my words, all of that wetness doesn't hit the microphone. It instead stays on the pop filter. And uh, it's really easy to put on, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's a great little accessory. Very nice. I'm using that exact same mic. And the same. Me three, three. me three. It's, it's my favorite. You know, you can you can sing with it. You can record your vocals, your instruments. It's I love this mic. And I actually I I host Mackie has a podcast, the ins and outs with uh, Mackie podcast. My shameless plug. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and I actually podcast using this microphone paired with the same mixer, the Pro FX 12 that Cola is really excited about. So I love I love those two in conjunction with each other. You're such a copycat, Jamie. Oh, wait, you had Copy yours first. Who? <laughs> who copied who? <laughs> we can both rock it, man. It's a it's a great unit. I mean, it's the the fact that two separate people across the the country can can use the same gear. You know, it's pretty cool. We we had um, Dave Weiner just this last earlier session talking about how he jams out with his guitar using it, and he did like a live on the spot demo. We didn't even tell him, you know, and we were like, "Hey, can you play a lick?" And he just plugged in his guitar and press play and edit an effect. And it was like on the fly. So the, the fact that it's so versatile and easy to get uh, started, it, I mean, makes sense that everyone should have one in their uh, backpack or studio, you know? Again, one of the important things I pointed out, so versatile, so quick right. and easy to just kind of tailor your sound and go. And that's, that's the beauty of putting those onboard effects and those uh, EQs and everything just ready to go for you. So smart, smart, smart. That's right. So we have a question from Joelle. Can we record multi-track with the Pro FX 12 V3? Um, we actually went over our brand new Onyx series that you'll want to check out that live session. If you missed it, it's pre-recorded. Um, but yeah, look at the Onyx. That one does do multi-track recording. Ty, who is another specialist, he actually does a deep dive on routing and how to do that within Pro Tools or your DAW. So make sure you scope out uh, that video on Mackie TV and he'll do an actual deep dive on that. So um, what's next? What is the standard cable length? So they come with three cables. Craig, do you want to speak speak to the, the, the sizes and the types? I mean, there's so many different 
cases for these guys and types. Yeah. So for the MC 350 and 450, we actually have a three cable bundle that comes with the here. Hold on. I'll put up the there you go. You can see the little pack there on the inside. That's a separate case that holds all your cables. And um, what we have in there is a 10 foot straight cloth jacketed cable. We have a 10 foot coiled cable that when it's not stretched out, it's about four feet long. There you go. Yeah. And then we also have a 3.5 uh, foot uh, inline cable that uh, is meant to be used with a phone. So it's got the TRRF connector and a built in microphone and the volume. Uh, or if you're a gamer. And buttons and yeah. So yeah, for sure. And so it comes with three different cables. And that long cable has saved me a couple of times on standing up with the headphones on and just <laughs> the last. I'm picturing the was there, so. him running and it, and it pulling him back on his sliding chair. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to ask you this question, Cola. I wrote this down. This is from me. If you had to choose one piece of Mackie gear to keep with you on a deserted island. <laughs> Which one would that be? That that's a tough question, but really a simple question, I guess. Because uh, maybe it would two, definitely be two huh? two, two products. Maybe that be easy because you need one for with the other. <laughs> right, right. But I would automatically uh, say my MC four fifties. I mean, you know, um, because because that's what I write in, that's what I mix in, and um, it allows you know um, people that are around me to be a little bit nosy because we got a little sound coming out of them, you know, and. But then at the same time, it, they just um, they just take me to a different place as far as because I, I write in them too. That's I, I don't use closed back headphones anymore to um, to to write and to create my music because I don't know for some reason it feels different. I mean I can't explain why. Again, Craig can tell all the the technological side of why it's different, but it is completely different. Feeling like you're writing in the room with the music versus the music like being kind of in the middle of your head when you're listening yeah. to either closed back or uh, ear pods or anything like that. So that would be my one piece of equipment to be stranded with. I guess I'd have to make sure I have something to plug them into, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, this is true. You probably do need the two products. Um, and out of curiosity, so you have you have a, a Pro FX on your desk and you also rock a Big Knob Studio. When Got do you use one? Knob. When do you use one versus the other one? Well, um, mainly, you know, I, I just kind of got, you know, got the big knob in line and all that kind of thing. So mainly all I'm using the big knob for at this point is a, as a, it's a great headphone mixer, obviously allows a couple sets of headphones to be plugged in. Yeah. And then also just using it for studio monitoring and be able to quickly switch on my AMB between, you know, the sets of monitors that I uh, that I have. And um, it just, you know, and allows me to quickly, you know, mute those and everything. So it's just it's a sweet piece of equipment. And I can't wait to use some of the other functionality of it, you know, <laughs> as I, uh, you know, go, you know, dive deeper into the uh, into my setup. For sure. For sure. All right, let's see. 16 Live Records asked if uh, it was possible to get a spare cable. We actually sell the case and the three cables as a separate SKU. So, uh, yes, that's possible. Sorry, I, I, I actually, there we go. Oh, somebody's a baseball. Oh, I see that question up there. Hold on. I got, a, <laughs> I got something for you, Michael. Hold up. Ooh. I keep this in my studio, man, because uh, <laughs> oh, look at this, you guys. This bat, he actually, oh, Ken Griffey Jr. actually played with this bat, okay? So this is a game-used wow. bat, and, it, and uh, he gave it to me after one of the games, and he, and he signed it here. Hopefully, you guys can kind of kind of see that. Wow. And, um, yeah, this was his actual his actual bat. And to give you guys a little background about the story of when uh, Ken Griffey, you know, came into the studio with me, he literally, yes, because back then, date myself again, he could <laughs> not, you know, just, uh, you know, he couldn't just record and, you know, sit and send the MP3 or the wave file over and all that, man. We had to get in the lab and kind of get it, get it done together. And so, um, you know, he came into the studio. So we had a little bet going. I told him I'd be better in the batting cage and he would be on the microphone. And for those of you guys that oh. heard the song, he held his own. He did his thing on the uh, on the uh, on the microphone, recorded his song. It was really dope. Wow. So 
I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a vacation and I'm gonna come down with you to spring training and I'm gonna go in the batting cage with you and I'm gonna show you what an athlete can really do. Cause you know, oh I mean, man, I'm strong, I lift weights and you know, I do all that stuff, man. I'm, I'm gonna show him what an athlete can do. <laughs> well, <laughs> baseball can be a humbling sport. I'm just gonna say kind of, kind of like that. Um, so there's a, there was a batting cage called the wild thing. And, um, the, you know, a lot of the players, you know, you had to sign a waiver to even go in it if you weren't on the team. And um, a lot of the players would tell you, hey, man, you know, it, it, it's it's serious in there. So I started out in a, in, a, in a couple of the slower things. And he said, no, 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 no. Now, here's where you got to go. So I walk into the wild thing. Right. And I'm standing there. These balls are coming at 95 miles an hour. But that's not guaranteed. Yeah. It could be anything between 95 and up or down. So you just have no idea. So. It spits out the first ball, and I'm standing there like I'm ready to hit it. The ball hit the pad behind me before I knew the ball was coming, and I, I that's got to be impossible somehow, but it happened. <laughs> so I'm like, this, this can't be real. So I see like, like, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. So I took a couple of, of, of sad hacks at that thing. And I could not, I couldn't, couldn't really hit one ball. Like, I mean, I think I might've nicked one. I'm going to stick with that story that I think I, I put a bat on one. You nicked one. You nicked one. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. It wasn't good. <laughs> so funny story behind that. That's the truth. But Ken Griffey came in the studio, recorded the, uh, the song, the way I swing with me. Um, I recorded several other songs kind of for him that he was featured in another one uh, back home. Uh, when he came back from Cincinnati and back to the Mariners, we're still great friends, man. And um, yeah, that's, that studio experience was one of a kind. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> We've got a really good um, question here for you, Cola. Uh, uh -huh. From Grand Mixer. How's it going, man? How does the 808 kick drum sound for mastering in the headphones and the monitor? Since you, you're rocking the CR5s as well as the sub. Yeah. What's so crazy is definitely when you got it in the uh, when you have it in the, the monitors and you have the, the sub pumping at the same time, it, it just sounds like you're in your car or anything else. man. it's just full and rich. And I, you know, and I try to be careful in terms of like, you know, making sure I don't enhance too much when I'm doing my mixing and all that kind of thing. But man, I mean, <laughs> it sounds as real as it can get, and it sounds as full and rich as it can get without, you know, um, without being in an enhanced studio because, or I'm sorry, in an enhanced uh, system. I, I love the way the, uh, the the way it sounds, and then when I transfer it to the headphones, it's like you don't even lose anything. And again, Craig can can get into the the techie side of why that is, but it's surprising. It's that is the part. That's the one thing I was very surprised about when I got the uh, when I got the MC 450s was that the bass was so rich in those headphones that it really literally you can feel that 808 bass and it almost was like fooling me to think can i feel the bass like i'm like it's coming out of woofers it really literally <laughs> fools you into thinking that it's that that present and that clear craig can explain why this happens i can't explain the phenomenon i can just tell you that it's true you know what what i will say is when it comes to just raw bass output like if I'm listening to any kind of like drum and bass trap, anything that's just got, you know, like subsonic bass, um, I got to say that I, I, I still prefer the, the 350s, even though the 450s are my favorite headphones. I, 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 if that's what I'm doing and I'm not doing it for, a purpose like if i'm not for example call it like mastering you know what i mean like if i wasn't if i wasn't doing something listening critically if i'm just listening for pleasure uh or if i'm djing um the 350s are the ones i i i reach out for usually something about that closed back that tuned space um it adds it adds a little bit to it but um, in terms of like natural sounding bass, like like if you really just want to hear what it sounds like, and that even goes to like the the tuned 808 bass, not the the 
the standard, you know, kit, but the guys who would, uh, put that apex big bottom, uh, underneath it so that it generated that octave down. Yes, sir. Um, that kind of sound like, uh, cars that go boom kind of sound. Yeah. Um, it, it, even that you hear, you don't just hear the attack. Like a lot of sound systems do you hear the sustained tail. And that's when you know that you've got real bass. So now, now Craig, you know what you you know what you've done, right? Jamie, dated uh, myself. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to hit up Rob, and Rob's gonna have to. He, Rob, you can start filling out the PO right now. I know you're watching, Rob. You can start filling out the PO now because I'm gonna need a set of three fifties, man. Greg, Craig ain't gonna be talking about them headphones and not giving. We got set, you. So we got I'm you. Don't worry. Have, to have those. Don't, and then we'll talk to you again about those. So sorry to cut everybody off. We got five minutes till the end of this. So we've got a giveaway we're going to do. And also, Cola, you're going to be doing a giveaway on your Instagram that's going to be announced shortly. Where can they find that? Nice. Yeah. yeah. So um, at, at Kid Sensation underscore official, that's uh, my Instagram. Uh, make sure and connect with me there. Um, we're, we're giving away a set of MC4 and the response that we've got. And really cool and people are excited about it and uh i don't know man i i'm, I'm not like when when whoever gets these headphones is going to understand that it ain't salesmanship it's not me <laughs> trying to sell a set of headphones i don't have anything to gain or lose by anybody buying these headphones except for to say that you're going to be blown away by what you get i mean it's 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 crazy and these headphones are are amazing and everything that i've talked about and bragged about them it's literally the best set of headphones i've ever put on my ears and i have been in some very very high-end studios and i'm telling you nothing compares That's awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome thank you so much cola thank you craig for being on here with us today and most of all cola it's been wonderful hearing you talk about everything today and to you all as well um let's get ready for that giveaway drum roll please <laughs> MC450 giveaway winner is Savannah Wheeler. Savannah, Savannah Wheeler. You won the MC450s. Savannah, I hope you're watching, man. That's going to be exciting because, oh, man. Savannah, make sure and link up with me on Instagram, too, because I want to know so that you can verify all of this noise that I'm talking about <laughs> the 450s They are crazy. So make It'll sure, Savannah, that you. you link up with me. Tag Mackie, tag me. And we want to see you listening to your headphones. I, I want to hear your testimony, your story about what these headphones, they are, they, you need them in your life and you're about to have them in your life. And I want you to tell everybody about them because everybody needs these in their life. It's crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Cola. We really appreciate it. We'll take Absolutely. care, everybody. Stick around. We've got some more presentations coming to you live tomorrow. Come Scope is out. Scope is out at Mackie TV. Subscribe for all those latest updates. We'll talk to you next time, Macoids. See you later. Thanks for joining. Take care, everybody. Hey, Mac, you, guys. you guys are amazing. They support you, so get their stuff. They'll yes. hook you up and take care of you afterwards. Love Thank you. It.